Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Brian Hosick. Brian is the Game and Fish Department's GIS specialist. Brian, we've got some new and exciting technology to talk about. Tell me about it. Well, we've uh, we made some changes to our map service applications. Um, these are typically desktop applications, but we've uh, we've made them responsive, and they're so they'll fit many different devices like a desktop or a tablet or a, a phone. So, what was once stationary is now mobile. Uh, more or, or less, basically. yeah. We we've provided a, a number of uh, applications on the website for specifically for a desktop user. Um, typically, they offered more functionality, um, a nice suite of tools, more custom, you, you can customize them and, sure. and things like that. And we brought a lot of that stuff and those capabilities to the, to the mobile devices, so. For the purposes of our talk today, let's break this down into two categories, stationary and mobile, and talk about some of these tools that are available uh, to people. Yeah, again, it's, um, we've, we've really tried to, you know, broaden that and let the user experience the kind of uh, tools that they want. And, um, and bring in that uh, kind of that uh, more technical uh, abilities for you to really really get in there and, and, and modify and, and kind of get the things you want versus. Right. Let's, uh, let's talk first about the stationary yeah. uh, sure. ap applications that we have um, that are available for people that are say basically just planted at a computer. They're not mobile. Yeah, they well these are both. Maps, these are really both. Maps and yep. Yeah, we do have the, you know, you can certainly sit at the desktop and and um, again, if you want to you want to make something and, and print it out, maybe take a hard copy with you. Now, um, this would be for people maybe that are planning a hunting trip and sure. not on the road yet. Maybe, Absolutely. So. There's a lot of, we have a lot of information out there so you can you can turn that information on, um, build what you want to see whether it be, uh, you know, planning a hunt or fishing, you know, bathymetry and uh, Print it out, or again, you can you know you can have those that stuff with you now, um, bringing that type of functionality out in the field with you. So right now, by these maps that you're talking about, you're talking about uh, plots guides, uh, lake maps, any number of of things that are available that haven't been available in the past. Absolutely, yeah. They have uh, we have shooting ranges, things like that. A lot of department information is is out there, and um, it's really. Uh, it's really up to the user to kind of you know navigate and experience that. Each one of these, each one of these have their pros and cons. And so, uh, for example, the the map service application, um, you're gonna you're gonna use that through a browser. So whether you're at a desktop and you're gonna browse through the you know through a, a browser and, and navigate to the to the website gf.nd.gov um, and navigate to that application, you're gonna use it that way versus um, perhaps a mobile a mobile app. With the uh, mobile apps, again, they are available on the on the Play Store or the App Store. It's the ESRI ArcGIS app. Um, a lot of folks know it as the Green app. They they go out there and download it. And they're making changes to this all the time too. They're uh, they're making some, uh, you know, constantly developing on there and uh, adding some more more features to it. But uh, the nice thing about this is, is when you when you download it to your phone, your phone, it is it is uh, something that's accessible right on the desktop. There, you don't have to navigate through the browser. With that, you know, with that app, there's uh, um, you're going to get that experience with with uh, the user being able to click right on the app as a, as opposed to browsing to you know browsing to the application through um, gf.nd.gov to locate it. So the app really gives that user that experience where you, you know you're, it's right there on your phone. Um, and then there's still the 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 GPS maps out there. So um, we, we're getting in, we're getting pretty good uh, cellular coverage mm -hmm. uh, throughout the state. So when you're out and about in the field, uh, you can you can have uh, these these devices are working with good cellular service, um, and that's just improving. The the uh, when you're in areas where you don't have good cellular service, you know that's the con of some of these things. So some of them will work uh, that limited functionality, but uh, that's where the GPS the GPS part picks up. You know you have that with you; it's on the device itself, so you don't need to be in cellular range. But. Right. Let's talk about how people can. Uh, Say for sake of example, now they're away from their home computers, they're actually on their hunting trip or their fishing trip. How do they go about accessing, uh, say, a fishing map for one of the smaller lakes in North Dakota? Kind of walk me through the process. Yeah, um, again, there's, there's multiple options here. The, uh, on the native mobile app, you're going to click the button and click on the fishing map if, you know, once, you've, once you have that on your, your phone. Um, 
Uh, the other route being you're going to navigate to the website, gf.ndy.gov slash maps, and you can get to our map service applications and uh, start using those features. Uh, the best examples I can give you is how I use them. Um, even just recently with a youth deer hunt, you know, I, I have this information out there, these tools out there in the field with me. I can look at, I can bring up uh, that application navigating through the site. Um, I can turn on some aerial imagery, for example, um, and measure. I want to, I'm, I'm looking at the landscape out there and I want to know approximately how far it is to, to each of the things that I'm seeing. So um, I can use tools like that to measure, um, get, get distances of the area around me. Um, or again, if you just want to quickly locate yourself, I might click the app and, and uh, fire up the plots guide, uh, click the little locate button and it'll zoom in right to where I'm at. Now, so, this is a way that you can also tell, I would guess, if you're on private land, if you're on plots land, if you're on BLM land, uh, all of these tools are available for people. Absolutely, that's, that's the, the nice thing about it. I, you know, I, we, uh, a lot of folks have that, that hard copy plots guide in their vehicle, um, but this is definitely a, a nice feature. We're getting a lot of good feedback on this, uh, bringing that plots guide with you on your, on your mobile device. Well, especially for people that are, say, they're two or three miles away from their car, middle of the badlands, they need to know if they're yep. on a ranch or if they're on uh, you know, or, federal yeah. grasslands or... Uh, Absolutely, especially if you're unfamiliar with the area you're hunting. You know, yep. sometimes it's nice to, to, to see the, you know, the terrain over the hill or, or something like that or, or really uh, evaluate that track a little further um, if you're going to, when you're going to walk in there or, you know, maybe there's a slough on the other side, something like that. So. Sure. A lot of people now are up to date with this kind of thing. They have the technological skills and things to get around other people. Uh, <laughs> lagging behind uh, in technical skills. What kind of a skill set does someone need to get at these tools? Well, I, I don't know if, uh, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of folks that just have to, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily courage that you need to go out there and try these things, but it's, you know, it's just interest. You gotta, you know, start, you, you know, they're free and you can't break them. Right. That's, a, that's a, great, a great thing to have. So. <laughs> You know, get out there and you, and you try it and you, you know, experience the tools and find what you know, advantages it can bring. So. Right. Now, when you say that you can't break them, that's probably very good ad advice for people to just go out and experiment. Absolutely. If you, yeah. if you get somewhere where you don't think you belong, you can just back out of it. You know, you're not going to get in any trouble. You're not going to break it. It's definitely, uh, again, nice, nice tools. I think we get, we get a range of, of different skill sets and technical capabilities using them. And, uh, we really try to reach uh, those folks with the different types of apps that we have on our website. Um, the, the real simplistic ones where you, you click them and it's, and everything's there for you. The plots guy's gonna come up right away. To those that, you know, again, folks that wanna customize things, they wanna, they wanna turn on maybe, you know, different layers um, and build their own maps that, with the information that we have on those applications. So, um, or, or, you know, there's, again, there's a lot of tools on there, a lot of rich tools on, on, on some of those map service applications that they can, uh, they can utilize, so. Okay. If you are completely lost on some of this stuff, you're scratching your head and, and have given up and just say, I just don't understand it, there is a tutorial on our website that's absolutely going to walk you through ways that you can get into this, uh, this helpful material. Yeah, we've been, we've been trying to, you know, go that direction, you know, putting, putting those tutorials out for the, the GPS maps or for using the applications. Um, and uh, yeah, it gives, it's a lot easier for folks to kind of click on there and, and see it, you know, see it live or see it someone, how someone else is using it, so. All right, Brian, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Some hunting seasons in North Dakota are already open, including grouse and partridge and the deer archery season. Resident waterfowl opened last weekend. Non-residents can begin hunting Saturday, October 3rd. Pheasant and wild turkey seasons are both open Saturday, October 10th. And then the firearms deer season is set to open at noon on Friday, November 6th. Make sure you read the proclamation for whatever species you're pursuing. Know the rules and regulations thoroughly before hitting the field this year. For Brian Hosick and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.